Now let's welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Like uh, Dr. Liu has said, CSR is a very prospective industry. And uh, in such a morning, Shanghai is really beautiful. It's pretty sunny. As we have heard, in Beijing, it's similar to Shanghai today. That's why we should hold this kind of conference all the time. Maybe we can do something to help control the pollution. I think. It is a very important platform for us. The organizer wanted me to talk about the trend of China CSR as well as the future. So in my sharing, I will be talking about the economy of China as a whole, as well as its connection with CSR, just to inspire further discussion. The development of China's economy is in the turning point. And we are also doing the economic structure readjustment as well as a more maturing stage for the past economy policy. In the first three quarters of this year, the GDP reached 42 trillion B, which is uh, growing by 7.4 percent. 7.4 percent means China is no longer enjoying the double digit development, but 7.4 percent is still above middle. All the economic data show that China is entering into economic development trend with more driven force, with the speed slowing down, but still moderate. These are the new economic norms for China's society as a whole. In the new era of China's economy, there are more requirements toward sustainability. Under the new norm of the society, we will say goodbye to the rough development way in the past. We will also no longer rely on the capital only. We will need to no longer sabotage our economy under the environment. First of all, China's economy will be more targeting the quality and efficiency instead of just the quantity. Secondly, China's economy will be more reliant on innovation and technical advantage. Thirdly, China's economy will be more environmental oriented. We will help to further utilize the energy. Fourthly, China's economy will also be more fair and transparent to create a better environment to create a society that is relying on the law and the legislation. For the new norm of China's economy, it posed great challenges and new requirements toward CSR. For any company to realize CSR and achieve sustainable development, it is not a hollow and abstract slogan. Just by issuing a CSR report every year, it is too much sophisticated than that. The revolution has to be well grounded. We do need to think harder in order to find the right solution. In line with the new norm of the China's economy and looking at the new requirement for the whole company as a whole, I think I want to focus on five aspects. First of all, through the realization of CSR, we need to further deepen and strengthen a revolution towards the society. For a company to realize their CSR responsibility, the stakeholders matter the most. We have 87 companies in China who got into top 500 in the world already. That is already a large portion, and it will grow even bigger. But for all the Chinese companies listed in top 500, sometimes they are too big in scale, but their efficiency is not so optimal. To further promote CSR and the sustainability of a company, it is crucial for the stakeholder to take responsibilities. How to educate the company with a great driven force internally? 
we need to have the hybrid ownership revolution. For this kind of revolution, the whole society cares a lot about it. But in real practice, we are faced with many challenges and issues. For the SOEs, generally speaking, their stakeholders are concerned about the sacrifice of the state-owned assets. But for the private companies, it is also similar. Many private owners think they don't have their voice heard if they are just a smaller share. They are concerned that their personal value might be sacrificed. So I think what matters now is who is the bigger share, who takes the smaller share. What's important is to organize the behavior of these stakeholders. For SOEs, they have to be a good big brother. They have to make sure all of the rights of the information sharing is symmetrical towards different stakeholders. They need to legally utilize their company assets for the dividend and the bonuses of the company every year. They also need to take the responsibility to make sure everything is right. For the smaller stakeholders, they need to know how to use the law in order to maintain and uh, use their rights so they can help to protect the state assets as well. To develop a hybrid ownership, most, most important thing is to set up a more complete system. We need to make sure the legislation and the regulatory environment can be fully understood. The criminal, the responsibility legally of all the stakeholders has to be clear, clarified. We also need to set up a full protective mechanism so the right of the stakeholders can be protected well. The current revolution of the ownership schedule also needs to be fair, transparent, and equal. We need to set up such a framework and architecture so the public can take advantage of the hybrid ownership revolution as well. For this new ownership revolution, it is not only targeting on the big companies and big stakeholders. The public should have a chance to participate as well. In the UK, about two decades ago, maybe three decades ago, Satchel, when promoting the privatization of that in UK, the state-owned assets covered the big share. So she divided the share to be 20 per share. As long as you're willing to participate, you are okay to do so. In China now, we are also going through a similar transformation. The share is really big. It's either several millions or several tens of millions. So I think for such big amount of asset, it is unlikely for the general public to participate. So personally, I think we should innovate. We should have a new mechanism to support the public participation. We need to have a full new thinking methodology in order to create a platform for the public. This way, we can create a fair and transparent environment. If we don't do so, the hybrid ownership transformation is not related to the public at all, and that will not be good for the future. I think we also need to have innovative policy for this public fair, for the pension, for the insurance. We need to evolve them in the company, in the new system as well. For the responsibility of the stakeholders, I think the state-owned assets belong to the general public. According to the People's Congress, we need to have 30% of state-owned assets into public capital and public expenditure. So the general public will be able to share the benefits from the development of SOEs. Secondly, we also need to further realize the CSR so the internal power of the SOEs can be further driven and they will be creating a fair environment. A company is not only the conveyor for the value, it also concludes the stakeholders, employers, consumers, suppliers. It is a full network. It's not only the value of the stake owner themselves. For the legislation and the record environment in the U.S., they have done a lot of modification, so the right of the stakeholder can be protected. So the focus of China's reform, I think it should be actively maintain the interest of the employees. We know that in Europe and uh, ESAP has been implemented for a very long time and received good results. 
and the 18th People's Con Congress has also indicated that we need to protect the interest of the employees. So actually, in the previous uh, ownership reform, it's always the reform in the capital. But actually, the major idea of the 18th People's Congress is about the values of the employees, values of the workers. So personally, I have done some investigation. Actually, there are five values. So capital, risk, management, and work. And for the values of the enterprises, with the development of the enterprises, we can abstract it as the average um, interest rate of the bank. And for the values of the risk can be understood abstractly as the insurance premium rate. And another value comes from the complicated work of the capitalists. And the other part is the values generated by scientists and also the values created by the employees through the training and also uh, skills attainment that also achieved in the theory of Karl Marx about uh, work creates values. Actually, I have went to a lot of enterprises in the US, Europe, and China. All the good enterprises have implemented ESAP program. So I'd like to call out no matter for SOE or private enterprises or foreign funded enterprises in China, we should all need to pay attention to protecting the interest of the employees and promote the reform of the employees' ownership. Only when the employees became the shareholders of the enterprise, they will become good enterprises. So actually, the normal greeting of Chinese will be, have you eaten? But I'm sure in the future, when the, the Chinese employees would ask themselves, have you had the shares of the company? So we need to implement and promote the transformation of Chinese economy. Last month, um, IMF have disclosed that based on the buying power, China is going to achieve 17.6 trillion U.S. dollars, exceeding U.S. and Europe. So accounting for 16.5 percent. So after 200 years, China is be will become the first biggest economy, but, but we're still lagging behind in terms of quality of the development. The m most important thing for enterprise development is to promote the sustainable competitiveness of the enterprises. Actually, we're still lagging behind in a lot of indicators, like industri industrial and increased values. So the denominator is the increased value, and the denominator is the overall value. So China is only about 23 percent, which is about over 20 percent. That means we are good in quantity, but not very good in quality. Compared with a lot of enterprises in other countries, we are still lagging far behind. For example, like in the standard raw coal, we have consumed about half of, of the coal reserves. But the consumption rate is about 2.5 times compared with European and American countries. For every consumption of one ton and coal, the, G the GDP generated is only about 17,000. But for other countries, they can generate about 20,000. Yen RMB, and Japan is 50,000 RMB. So we have consumed a lot of energy, but our GDP is only accounting for 12% globally. 
So, with systematic innovation, we need to promote Chinese economy transformation. Every entrepreneur, everyone, needs to take their responsibility to save every uh, consumption of energy. And also, CSR report of the enterprises also needs to disclose those information in terms of quantity and their approaches. And we also need to disclose the comparison with counterparts internationally and find our positioning and find our future direction. And we, we also need to implement social responsibility and faith should be the foundation for the market economy. We need to fight against commercial corruption. We know that China's anti-corruption campaign is going deeper and deeper. We see a lot of astonishing things. For every official who has uh, been falling down, a lot of entrepreneurs will follow. And for every official that goes into jail, it always, or always involves a, a lot of entrepreneurs. So ultimately, there will be no winner. So actually, it will protect the enterprise for a very healthy development. So in the current situation, especially in China's situation, we need to pay more attention to that. And also, the enterprise development need to be honest and faithful during the development. And we know that for the steel trade problem, steel generates a lot of debts and risks among the enterprises in Jiangsu and Zhejiang. And the default of contracts is a very severe problem. So during the economic downturn, sometimes there's a lot of debts between the the debtors and so the debts are transferred from one party to another party. That means the this something we need to pay attention to in terms of CSR. We need to abide by the Chinese laws. We need to strengthen the protection of the consumer rights and also partners' rights. Without a comprehensive legal system, we cannot establish a solid foundation for the market economy. So CSR is something every enterprise needs to do. And for CSR, we also need to develop towards environment-friendly and for the most powerful Actually, the most important uh, standard is ISO 26000, which puts the CSR and environment protection at, at a very important position. So we need not only need to meet uh, the, the demands for the current generation, we also need to protect the resources for the humankind in terms of uh, ocean, forests, so that our future generations will be able to live a happy life so we can not cut off the f future roads. So we cannot just develop for GDP but sacrificing the resources and the dependency of China's uh, on natural Oil is already, uh, natural gases is already 38, and on iron ore is 70 percent, and for copper is 81 percent. So all these astonishing figures. We are always saying that China is in resources rich. Actually, we a lot of it, resources in China are going to be used out. So a lot of waste of the resources are happening. The recovery of the mineral resources is less than 40% and for 
non-ferrous metals is about 35 percent. It's about 20 percent lower than other countries. So we have about 2,000 uh, quasi mines, and the emission is about 300 million tons. And there are over 20 mines that have no comprehensive utilization projects. China is the biggest production country of coal. Last year it was 3.7 billion tons per year for the production. But the coal that were wasted every year is about 704. Million tons. So the total value is about 450 billion RMB. Actually, I have calculated the Japanese invasion in China, the direct and indirect cost is about 540 billion US dollars converted in. Actually, if the losses caused by insufficient exploitation in China creates more losses to China than the Japanese invasion in China. So those are very valuable natural resources created by the Mother Nature. So we need to lead the resources to our future generations. We, sh we shouldn't let future generations see the coals on only in the museum. So we need to have a sense of risk, and we need to pay more attention about utilization and exploitation of the energy. We need to have a complete legal system. We know that the during the four uh, plenary sessions, we have which have called upon. Uh, legal system of CSR. Actually, we need to start that very soon. First, we need to establish CSR law by the People's Congress so that the enterprises need to implement uh, the CSR. And we need to have an, a unified legal system for whatever enterprises they have to undertake their responsibilities. Second, based on CSR, we need to revise and the company law to show the interest, liabilities, and obligations of all stakeholders. Third, we need to accelerate creating a more complete environment protection system so that we can include those environmental protection and subsidies, subsidy system in, into the regulations. And we also need to have evaluation and rewarding systems. By establishing regulations, we can eliminate the worst ones and promote the good ones. And the most important thing of that is that we can cannot let the bad ones eliminate the good ones. So for those who damage the environment and damage the CSR or making damages to the environment for the interest of the enterprises, we need to eliminate those enterprises and for enterprises to implement CSR and promote the social development should be the obligation of enterprises. There is an English saying, to do well, to do good, to do good, to do well. So actually, we have always been supporting CSR for the sustainable development of Chinese economy in the new normal. So we hope that we can make our joint efforts together. Thank you.
And thanks very much to Mr. Chu for your wonderful opening speech. You have touched upon the sustainability and CSR, and put it at a very high focus for China's future development. And you have proposed、uh, requirements for CSR and sustainability. So, by implementing CSR, the enterprises can promote their further reform and create internal activity. So that the shareholders can play a major role in activating the business vitality, and we can also show the fairness and equality of competition. So we would also like to call upon all enterprises to pay attention to the role of CSR in the enterprises. By implementing CSR and sustainability, we can promote China's economic transformation, promote law-based market competition mechanism, and promote environment-friendly energy saving. As of old, twenty-six thousand-based eco economic ecosystem. Mr. Chu has、uh, taken his time to participate in this meeting. So let's put our hands together once again for Mr. Chu.